No, no, no! No! Are you listening? Sean from Middle Grounded, before we begin, I want to tell you a story. I was 12 years old. I was so excited for my birthday. I got a brand new blue and yellow Huffy Pro Thunder BMX. This wasn't an expensive bike, but it was something to me that was so cool and so important that I got this because I was going to be a pro BMX rider. <laughs> yeah. I get convinced to ride up to Taylor Drugstore. I lean it up against the wall with the other bikes. I go inside. I'm getting ready to leave. And looking back, I know somebody stalled me. I didn't find out until I was 17, 18, who did it. But it was a bully down the street. He had a $1,000 Redline BMX bike with gold plating. And he rode in BMX races. Thank God he didn't win. But he wanted to be a pro BMX rider. Because I had gotten it, and I was so happy. His family, who's notorious, talking parents and everything for going out and egging houses. Now, we lived in a nice suburban neighborhood. And that was a, a kind of asshole that lived down the street. He would pick on me. He was on my list. But at that moment, I had kind of just realized it's time to grow up. I started to, taking wrestling classes, kickboxing, boxing. I got really good at defending myself. So I took revenge on all of the bullies when I was a kid, the ones I tried to fit in with, that I would take the verbal abuse and the physical abuse from because it allowed me to be a part of the cool crowd. And they would laugh, which I thought, oh, I didn't mean to hurt you, dude. We're just wrestling or playing around. But I realized later it was because they were picking on me because I had braces, curly hair. I was a dorky kid. I had some girlfriends, you know, quote unquote girlfriends. But for the most part, I was kind of a nerd. So 17 years old, I took revenge, publicly humiliated these guys, held them down with their arms behind their back, wrapped them up like a pretzel. One guy I beat the hell out of, and I realized I became what I hated. Now why am I telling you this? Because Lauren Armstrong never learned. When he was a kid, his mom, he said, was working multiple jobs, which I believe, because his dad supposedly left. It's Lorne. It's hard to know if he's telling the truth. He said he was, he idolized his brothers and sisters. But we know with Lorne, everything is an obsession. I'm sure he wanted to know what they were doing, what their friend, what kind of friends they had. Can he hang out with their friends? He was probably stage five clinger to them, annoyed the crap out of them. Roy was probably the only guy who tolerated him. And Lorne probably had one target that he could take his anger out on, and it was Roy. He didn't have the best clothes, because again, his mom was having to work multiple jobs just to make ends meet. He definitely wasn't a cool kid. He was a smaller kid. He was an easy target. He was a stage five clinger, so whoever was picking on him, whoever was treating him bad, he didn't care. He started making up fantasies in his head about being the star basketball player, which a lot of smaller kids do. There are movies about kids who retreat into their mind because they're targets of bullying. I'm sure Lauren had fantastical stories about what he's done. He never played video games. He never, at least he said, he never had any real hobbies. He just wanted to be accepted and hang around people and do whatever it takes to be accepted. His mom probably didn't have any stable relationships because Lauren couldn't take that he wasn't the center of attention. So there were two ways that Lauren could be the center of attention. Throw temper tantrums, throw temper tantrums, and that's pretty much it. Just to get his mom's attention. He probably didn't like it when his mom was focused on his siblings. And again, when Lawrence said he idolized them, which meant he was obsessed, which explains why he drove to wherever they were, gave them a bunch of money, because he wanted to be accepted, because he wanted to buy their acceptance, and it didn't work. I'm sure they did use him. And I'm going to say something that may be controversial. Lawrence 
infatuation with younger girls make him from the fact that he never had a girlfriend, he never had anybody that paid him any attention. So he was trying to recapture his childhood. Why he falls in love so easily, which that video will be coming out. It's a longer video than I expected, uh, mainly because there's so much to dive into. But we're talking about bullying. Lauren would probably approach people in the hallway, cling to people in classroom, call people that said hello to him, his best friends, because he had to in his head. He had to create these relationships. Think of Paula. She never probably even knew he was exist existed. He talked to her at work or talked to her wherever he was. She said hello to him. Maybe she spoke to him. And Lauren was pursuing her romantically, which he has no game, so obviously it didn't work. So when she went out with somebody, he was hurt. And he believes she cheated on him. You cannot form healthy relationships when you're picked on all of the time. Lauren was the little kid. Didn't have a lot of money. Didn't have a lot of friends, if any. Had only Roy. And Roy is the only person he could beat up, I think. Back then, I don't know, but he bullies Roy relentlessly. He gets on the phone and he makes threats to all these catfish women, to any guy that comes around. Because every guy's a threat. Because every guy was a bully to him, or at least didn't want to have, have anything to do with him. His feeling of inadequacy is deep-seated. It has taken hold of his psyche. And it will never, ever come back. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say something. Imagine Lauren being in the showers with that crooked little broken dick and somebody pointing it out. I can, I, I can imagine Lauren trying to laugh it off, which is why when Debbie, which is why he accepts these women telling him he's got a small crooked broken dick. And when Debbie's yelling at him, he's laughing going, I know, I know it, and he's, but I'm your bitch. Ha <laughs> ha. He's used to that behavior. He's used to that abuse, which is why he thinks it's okay. I'm not justifying anything this asshole does because I learned, people learned, I'm not the only kid that was bullied. I'm not the only kid that took revenge. I don't think Lauren ever got his revenge. I think Lauren driving through Cornville, if we rode with him and uh, we were invisible, we'd see a lot of what was going on. He probably sees people he went to high school with, working in different places, wherever they could get a job. And he walks up and he's like, uh, hey, uh, you remember me, Lauren Armstrong? Who? I was that kid in the back of class that would tug on your, your skirt and say, hey, look at me, look at me. Oh. Security Al 5. I'm just pointing out his childhood was not good. And the only woman who ever paid him attention was his mom. His mom made a joke. Now, Lauren paints her as this patron saint of mothers. But his mom made a joke. And this is an inappropriate sentence from Lauren. Mom, make sure you lock your doors so no guy comes in and takes advantage of you. That's a son saying that to a mom. Not so nobody breaks in. It's so nobody comes in and takes advantage of you. She said that... You know, I couldn't be that lucky. So Lauren's mom was just trying to live her life, probably a dirty mind like the rest of us, wanted a romantic relationship with someone, anyone. But her son, the stage five clinger, probably sabotaged all of those relationships. Anything to get attention. His manipulation, crying, that's probably how he got girls to notice him. What's wrong, Lauren? Those kids were bullying me. Screaming, because nobody was looking at him. He probably acted tough at school because he knew if anybody, you know, fought him, they would get suspended. No kid wants to get that phone call at the house where their parents are notified that their child is suspended. I would imagine Lauren got suspended a lot. I would imagine he did things in class so outlandish to get attention or then again he could have been the quiet kid who just wanted to get out of class go home play outside 
I don't know enough about him. I don't know if we'd ever get the truth from him. But I know I would love to have that conversation with him. But that's my opinion on Mr. Penis, the owner and proprietor of the Trailer of Failure, the owner of the Solo Chomo Sex Shop, the King of Condoms, Lauren Lynn Armstrong. I love you guys. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I will see you in the next one.